slowly start to come. Uh, these are supposed to be informal, which means that Sudipto is allowed to ask me questions. <laughs> That's fine. So I'll figure it out what is the room available. I can send the email. So everybody will get the email either in this room. I hope that will not be a problem because it's easier rather than booking a room. Just look at the whenever the room is empty and send it. But it will be useful to put it in the calendar. I'll try to do that. Shyam can do it, I think. Yeah. Or I cannot do it, I don't have the access. I but because people cannot uh, see what is happening, okay? So that. So what? Um, the way I am thinking of organizing this okay, is to divide the this weekly meetings into two parts. Okay. The first part will be concerned really with. Um, If you like things like how classical topology affects quantum states, quantum theory. So, this will be the first uh, several lectures. Okay. So, the, the focus is quantum theory okay. and I hope that I will convince you that the way you are taught, one is taught quantum mechanics in elementary courses is simply misleading okay. and does not affect, does not tell you the full richness of quantum theory. Okay. Once this is done, okay, some of you here, I think you were mentioning this, also wanted to know about um, this uh, so question so solitons and defects okay. so let me see I had some notes on that also okay so solitons and defects by that I mean um, that there are a number of instances both in um, in the context of um, quantum theory, okay. in many of the quantum theoretical models, solitons occur okay. and defects which are closely related objects which happen for example in condensed matter theory, they also occur and to have an understanding of these things one needs, this can be talked to certain extent purely classically and to understand this you certainly need some information on what are called homotopy groups. So, he was asking I think somebody was asking for some uh, introduction to homotopy groups okay, and how these get affected. So, I will hope to say something about that also. Okay. So, depending on the time by the end of the semester, end of this November, December we should be uh, getting somewhere. Okay, so, this is the plan. Okay. Uh, I had written down the books with on which I have based these things are books that we have written naturally and they will be supplemented by material from outside in particular for defects, to study of defects. There is a, for this, for, for these things, homotopy groups there are math books, that, but for defects there is in particular a review article by Mermin in uh, Reviews of Modern Physics, which is highly recommended. Okay. The virtue of that uh, review article, which is quite long actually, is that he painfully proves many of the theorems in homotopy theory, which are by no means <laughs> trivial. Okay. Many rich phenomena happen in homotopy in, with defects, also with solid and hence with solitons and hence in quantum theory. And this is one of the uh, physics references for learning this subject. 
So these are the two topics I have conceived of as trying to tell you something about. Okay. So I want to start with part one. Okay. So in elementary quantum mechanics. For example, if you take a book, uh, a standard book on elementary quantum mechanics, what you start from is uh, we are taught that uh, as follows. Okay. You start from some classical theory, okay, and you start from start from a classical theory by the way first one or two things I want to make introductory remarks and then I will try to convince you that this naturally leads to very elementary systems where this idea of fiber bundles and gauge series occur without any effort. You need them, for example, to describe particles of even such a simple system as a particle with a fixed, with a fixed spin, I will show you. Okay. If you want to describe a classical, if you want to describe a particle with fixed spin in quantum theory, you will find out that there is underlying it some highly non-trivial uh, topological structure and that is what I will start with. But before that I need to tell you some introductory material, how these things come about. Okay. So we start from a classical theory and this configuration space Q, call it Q. Okay. For example, it may be a particle moving in three dimensions with a, uh, with a say free particle moving in three dimensions and Q will be R3. Okay. Then we are taught okay, that wave functions are functions on Q. They, you are taught that wave functions are functions on Q, whereas we are taught that they are smooth functions on Q okay. and even single valued functions on Q. So there are many statements you find smooth, single valued, depending on whom you are talking about, you will find all these statements in books okay. and then from there one tries to develop quantum theory. Unfortunately, all these statements are wrong. They are uh, they seem they are correct only in the very elementary situations. But the moment you one starts talking about some more complex situation, then these statements are wrong. Okay. Wave functions are not functions on Q. We shall see that they are more complicated structures, and this was already understood okay, by Dirac in 1931. We'll see how it happens. Clarified okay, that okay, uh, let me put it now in the wave functions are not functions on Q. By I mean functions mean smooth functions, and that is simply not the case. Okay. And in fact, he in his 1931 paper he develops this idea okay, and shows uh, that in ordinary quantum theory you have the possibility of magnetic monopoles. Okay. He, what he does here is to develop this formulation and to show that uh, he proves the possibility of magnetic monopoles. And he proves that E.g. 
over 4 pi or something is n times h bar. This is an, a, a very remarkable, he should shows, you can ask me any question, I will show you how this happens. In fact, in the next a couple of sentences, you will see how we deviate from that original picture, okay, of wave functions being functions. But he proves this himself. This is, if you look at this, is electric charge and the magnetic charge, okay. If you look at this result, it is uh, very remarkable because this says that if there are one magnetic charge, okay, implies, okay, there exists one magnetic monopole anywhere in the universe that the ratio of two charges is rational. Sorry? E g over pi is e 4 pi is some unit, uh, m k is unit, I don't know about that. <laughs> but this n is integer, right? This n is an integer. Sorry, I don't understand. If you take one charge, one mo magnetic monopole, there is one electric charge and another electric charge. So both are n1 and n2. So this will be some n1 over n2, right? Yes? Here, that depends on this 4 pi unit, yeah, yeah. but that is not done by me, but that is done by somebody, some uh, uh, engineers, I do not know, I do not care about that. Okay. I will show you that uh, depending on the situation, there are some new effects happen, which I will mention now. Okay. You, you could have uh, a config, uh, you could have a composite of two integral spin objects okay, which create half integral spin in the system also. I will also tell you why that happens. But if there is one charge, one monopole somewhere sitting quietly behind the moon and you have two charges E1 and E2, one monopole sitting here, any one monopole. The Okay, but then it also implies the other way around that the, if you look at two monopoles with one electric charge, the ratio of the monopole charges also will be quantized. Okay. Okay. So this means that they all come in units of some fundamental unit. Okay. So, but why do you think that this, this uh, when you said that they are not smooth function on the configuration space, hmm. are you in mind talking, thinking about the string singularity? No, there, there will be no string singularity. That would be uh, let us say that is passe, you do not talk about strings, that is not the thing. Uh, but here still the functions, the, the web functions are still… They are not functions, they are, we will see what they are, they are some sections or some bundles, okay, so with transition functions, we will see what they are, okay. So the whole idea of thinking about them as functions is misleading and wrong, okay. It is wrong really, okay? because they are not… Um, the quant will it is a Hilbert space we are dealing with, no? We are not dealing with the Hilbert space is not from the Hilbert space contains all kinds of extremely bad things which you cannot differentiate, you cannot do anything, okay? Yes? For example, yeah, it is a what we are dealing with eventually is a Hilbert space of L2 functions on Q. But nobody told you that in these functions, these objects are smooth things, okay? they are not. Um, technically, they are not even functions, they are equivalence classes if you really want. So, it's, it gets really messed up. Okay? Okay? So, I will come to that all those things. Okay? So, this um, our formation where we are taught that function, we deal with functions is somehow not good. Okay? It is much more complicated than that. Okay? Quantum theory is much more complicated than classical physics, okay? much more rich I would say. Okay? So he already understood this, okay? and there were, uh, for, um, in the initial time there were a lot of activities around this, okay? but they are still going on, there are many unclarified issues which I will try to bring out, there are open problems which I will tell you, okay? of physical relevance, not made up problems. Okay? Okay. So, 
this is one aspect that the classical topology which is leading to all these effects in quantum theory cause all these remarkable results which I have pointed out and which I will try to prove. But conversely okay, the, the Q classically may support say solid trans defects etcetera. Mm. Purely classical solutions and you would like to see what are the quantum theories associated to this. Okay. So, this will lead to new states in quantum theory first thing they will do is to lead to new states in quantum theory and in and in in turn affect okay, their wave functions their quantum states. Okay. So, the classical topology affects quantum theory in several different ways. Okay. Uh, it affects you first by at uh, see the, this is yeah by pointing out that you should not think the fact that under appropriate under certain conditions it is misleading to think of quantum state uh, state vectors as smooth functions it lead you to wrong results or limited results and secondly in some cases where the classical physics admits topological structures they turn up in quantum theory new forms uh, with new properties. Okay. So, there is a this interplay between classical physics and quantum physics at the top at the which reflect the topology of your underlying configuration space this is what we would like to understand. Okay. So, let me start It is not very clear the problem with discussing this whole business is not it is not clear where you start it is not a linear development. Okay. So, tell me whatever you have said the classical uh, the configuration space is classical or the, the config yeah yes the Hilbert space is yeah, square degree functions on the configuration space okay Hilbert space is that okay but it is built on a configuration space okay. Then the way we deal with uh, things like Hamiltonians is that mm, so, so we are dealing with uh, now here is a yeah. So, the configuration space is giving you the Hilbert space then we have to uh, in this Hilbert space are somewhere inside this are structures which reflect tell you from where it came from okay. namely the configuration space from which you came and how is it happening how is it affecting our calculations and so on we want to understand ok ok they and they may be the way they turn up may be very complicated. So, this construction of the Hilbert space as you are saying uh, is it related to the GNS construction that we I am not using GNS he, I was told by Sudhir thought that nobody will be interested in that. So, I will not do it <laughs> I will not do it no, I will tell you the problem I will tell you the problem in another way to it is a free discussion no. So, I will show you immediately a problem ok. Statement is the following give me any two Hilbert spaces in any two ok infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces are isometric. I will show you right away just to provoke you ok. There is no way uh, there is only one Hilbert space the only invariant you can associate to a Hilbert space is the dimension in finite dimensions is the number is a dimension infinite dimensions if you have a basis they are all the same why because suppose I have a Hilbert space of a harmonic oscillator h 1 ok. Then you choose a harmonic oscillator basis n 0 1 countable basis this is say one dimensional harmonic now take a three dimensional harmonic oscillator ok. 
it is also a countable basis. Let me call it uh, 0 prime, 1 prime. Every Hilbert space that we deal with has a countable basis. Yes? Okay. Now I will give you a mapping from here to here which preserves scalar products. You map uh, n to n prime. You define a operator here u n is equal to n prime. U is, then you preserve scalar products. U is unitary, right? So if you give me any operator here, we'll go into what? U. Uh, I want to write a corresponding operator here, so I'll write u k u inverse u dagger acting on n prime. This is an operator takes u dagger takes you back to n k x here then I go back. So, this is an operator on the other one. So, this is completely identifying all operators all observables in this Hilbert space to that Hilbert space no difference ok. That means how do you tell harmonic oscillator from a hole in the ground they look exactly the same in quantum theory at the level of Hilbert spaces all observables are the same everything is the same okay. the, it is a convenience that uh, so if this is the case the question we want to understand which I can I have some feeling for that is then where I, where on earth is the information about the underlying configuration space built into quantum theory okay. where on earth is it okay. If you just give me quantum theory, I cannot tell what I am dealing with. Okay. Yes, do you agree with this statement? Any two infinite dimensional Hilbert spaces are isomorphic, they are the same. I mean, there is only one, I mean, it is not the same, there is only one which you can write in different ways. Just like there is only one finite dimensional Hilbert space for a given dimension. So, the question arises this is a, a question which uh, this is the question of okay, the quantum baby if you have heard about the quantum baby okay, given that uh, uh, all, us, all of us are quantum and imagine a quantum baby brought up on a nice diet of sulfur joint operators on a Hilbert space with good vitamins and so on and it grows up how does it tell a hole in the ground from harmonic oscillator? How does it because it will see everything how would, how would where is this information to it coming from what is the epistemology whereby people recognize that we are living the classical picture how do we recognize I think this answer this answer to this question is not known I think this is the fundamental question in quantum theory but uh, somehow we when we do quantum theory we build this information in in some structures but this is put in okay like just like when i do hydrogen atom i put in wave functions which are functions on r3 okay i could have done hydrogen atom by using harmonic oscillator one dimension wave functions it will be very painful but you can do it okay you don't do it because uh, so this is the problem okay I do not know I am I a pass a priori I do not know because it depends upon the reconstruction of classical. So, quantum theory in this abstract form of observables which are silver joint say even bounded silver joint operators on an infinite dimensional Hilbert space will not tell you whatsoever that there is a classical space time. This is why I say that when one goes into the deep quantum regime for example, black hole physics I think it is it starting from a, uh, with this visualization and then getting answers is highly misleading can be highly misleading because that is not how it works. I do not know the answers to this particular question I do not know.
but the, if you want you can long long ago I wrote not put a paper in the net called bringing up a quantum baby it's good if there are mothers here okay one has to be very careful no? uh, highly sanitized silver joint operators should be fed to the baby correct okay it comes but uh, it will deviate maybe later some there is no way to properly discuss this without looking at some operator theory because the stuff of quantum theory R is operator theory and states and so on okay that is how it is made if you like it or not it is that is how it is okay. so we had to start from there okay. then try to reconstruct our visual pictures can we do it it is not known that I know I ask people who understand these things much better than I but uh, they also said no so now I will uh, this is some by way of provocation so now okay I want to see how gay series arise in quantum theory these are all by way of introduction so I will by after having done this preliminary stuff I will give you a a short course on theory of constraints okay. short course means uh, I will just tell outline Dirac theory of constraints okay. and then because I needed to discuss things like particles with fixed spin magnetic monopoles instantons uh, uh, for all these things they up this what Dirac did appears again and again okay, in some way okay. So, I will do that ok, I will give you a short thing it will by no means be exhaustive but it will be useful. So, how do we, so what we have to what we say is the following ok, in quantum theory For sure, wave functions psi are not observable. Okay. What we can see at best are probability densities. Okay. So, but say psi star psi is is a probability density of five star chi such subjects such objects may be accessible to observations but we notice now but this is invariant this does not see the phase of psi that is psi star psi is invariant under phase change ok. Now very often we can take into account we can account for this phase by one way to account for this phase
is to enlarge, is to consider, is to uh, uh, think of wave functions psi okay, as functions again I will not say anything about smoothness on let me call it q hat which is q cross some circle let me write the circle as s1. So, at each point of the configuration space I am going to introduce topological notions now. So, what I am doing is to take my underlying configuration space q then at each, each point I attach a circle and I will say that my wave function to, this is to take care of the phase here that I will say that psi is a mapping of q hat to say complex numbers, but it is necessary that when I so this is a function psi takes a point here q at an exponential i theta and this gives you a complex number, but it cannot be any arbitrary complex number because when I take psi star psi I should not be able to see the phase. Okay. So, such that okay, psi q and I will write here exponential i alpha exponential i theta is psi of q exponential i theta exponential i alpha. Okay. I will consider only such functions. So, what I want to say is so there is a u1 action namely uh, let me exponential i alpha taking q exponential i theta to q exponential i alpha exponential i theta. I impose this condition is an imposition I will only consider such functions I'll, okay this is sort of trivial why because you can such things if it happens and my configuration space is like this I can always write this as psi q 1 times a phase right. So, it is not a trivial I want to I will go immediately to non trivial cases now this I can always do okay this is look stupid, but uh, we will deviate from stupidity in a minute. I have this okay. So, there is a u1 action, u1 is you I want you to distinguish this s1 from this u1 such that psi q uh, psi fulfills this property okay. This one. this will imply that psi star psi right it is invariant by this the phase cancels out. So, this thing is a function on q ok. So, the probability interpretation is possible because this phase cancels out. Sorry, add they all have the same property the here. So, this is a very good question you must have the same prop. So, all note all size must fulfill 1. So, all of them will change by the same phase then if you add it they will also be uh, changed by the same phase. So, even if under addition this property will be fulfilled ok. This is an ex example for you of a super selection rule because if you take one wave function transforming like this and another one with the 2 i alpha there 
and you try adding them then the probability density, probability density will depend on this alpha and you will get nonsense okay so this is already an example of a super selection rule okay now so it, you you must put the same thing here you can choose a fixed weight maybe m alpha you can choose where m is some integer but it must be the same weight for all wave functions which you superpose okay this already shows you that when you are taught that there is a superposition principle it cannot be exactly correct because certain wave functions cannot be superposed for example one transforming with an exponential i alpha here and another transforming with exponential 2 i alpha here cannot be superposed if you superpose it and you look at the probability density it will not be a function on your configuration space So I just choose alpha equal to minus theta, then cancels out. But this is sort of sort of easy. Okay. But when alpha is not equal to no, it is. It won't be there because uh, whatever it is, I am looking at this object, psi star psi. So I simply this implies in this case this implies that psi of q exponential i theta is some psi q1 in this particular case exponential i theta right and it cancels out in this particular case this is by way of introduction how these phases play a role but the interesting aspect which Dirac understood was but uh, basically Dirac does it and it is also done by Hopf in mathematics there are a variety of cases where there are cases where input okay, circles s1 on q on my at each point i put a circle such that eventually at each point I have a circle eventually what I get q bar is not this Cartesian product. So, I put this I will show you an example, but I put these circles at some point I twist things in some particular way. So, that it, this decomposition does not happen, okay. but in still this is the important point still okay, q hat has a u1 action okay. so q hat going to some q hat exponential i alpha so it is this is taking you along the circle locally at each point i have an s1 so this is this q and each point I have an S1 and this exponential i alpha is taking you around this okay, at each point, but the whole thing does not look like this. So, if this is happening okay, then, so, so we can look at Sorry. welcome we can consider wave functions I will come in a minute psi on q hat such that psi q hat exponential i alpha is psi of q hat exponential i alpha implying psi star psi is a function on a q. Okay, what is the question? No, question is, if you have a circle at each point on Q, hmm. then why would it look like P for this one? I will show you, I will give you an example. Huh? Does 
it won't there won't be any everything will be smooth but it will be some twist something okay it's like a braids on some funny thing you have done you know? Locally, not globally. Not globally. Locally, look like we have put circles. Okay. So look, and I, I will be able to construct. So locally, there is still a U1 action. It takes you along this fiber. Yeah. Ah, but he, uh, yeah, uh, I was careless here, but normally. He, normally there is only one action okay so i write it on the right okay. it doesn't matter okay it's not a group uh, the, the larger thing is some manifold i'll write it for it what it is okay. i'll give you an example so we are not okay but since if i look at only wave functions like this which under this action changes wave phase and i'll be I'll show you that they exist then psi star psi this because of this invariance under this one phase, one degree of freedom is lost. Okay. So, you would expect that this is a function on Q, one can prove it. Okay. Then, so probability interpretation is still possible. But you can no longer fix the phase. Okay. So, okay. Uh, quantum mechanics, probability interpretation is possible. Possible, okay. But we cannot smoothly uh, get rid of the face. Face, okay. By writing, okay. By What? By trying to write, by write, writing, say Q hat as some Q cross some phase, uh, some exponential i theta and fixing theta. This is not possible. Here in the previous case, I could write Q hat as like this, no? then I can choose theta some value. So, th the, this degree of freedom will be lost and will be the function I am dealing here in this case will be really this is a redundancy I could all as well deal with Q, but now I cannot do it because this that object is not if it is not living this wave function is not living on Q cross S1, okay. it is living on some other space. Okay. So, if you try fixing this phase locally you can do it in some small region you can write like this and suppose you try fixing this theta you will find that you will get into singularities as you keep going ok. So, if you try doing that then you will be ending with wave function well vector states which are no longer smooth functions giving you an illustration of my previous remarks that wave functions are not really functions. So, let me give you an example. This example will come again. This is uh, the example. Okay. So, what I do is for this example is the following let us consider S3. Okay. So, this I will coordinate S3, the three dimensional sphere. Okay. So, I will choose coordinates of S3 as two complex variables and I will put the condition modulus of z i square equal to 1. So, there are four real variables with one constraint. So, I get a three dimensional sphere. Now, on this three dimensional sphere u 1 x u 1 is a unitary group okay, of one time is phase x by this z i going to some exponential i alpha z i yes 
this maintains that condition okay so now f f uh, okay we want to wave functions okay so functions invariant by this action R, let's write z dagger z and z dagger tau y z. Let me call this n i. But tau, tau y are Pauli matrices. There are four of them here. Right? This this need this doesn't change by the phase. There are three of them. This doesn't change, but this is one. So this is not interesting. So there are three ni, but a short calculation shows you check n dot n is one. Okay, it's a very trivial calculation to write it down. Use this relationship I got here, and you find that this n is normalized to one. And we also see by inspection that n is real, n bar is n, because of the fact that Pauli matrices are Hermitian. So what is this? You know what this is, there are th three real vectors normalized to one, so the n's here span a two dimensional sphere. Huh? It's a half vibration, right? So what happens is so wave functions psi is are functions on S three. Okay, and I will put the condition the psi. If I multiply by a phase, it changes by a phase. I'll give you examples, explicit example which you may know. Okay. I'll find these functions, and if I do this, then psi star psi. If if I take these functions, function on S two. This example will occupy us, will come again and again. The simplest example of something non trivial. So, I can do quantum mechanics on the two dimensional sphere perfectly well, but uh, all we are taught in ordinary quantum mechanics is wrong because you cannot write wave functions in this uh, case. Okay. You have you can contemplate wave functions. Which are not smooth functions on your configuration space. Okay. They are much more complicated. So, can I show an example of this? Okay. So, let me show an example of one. In fact, I will show you many examples. It is sort of well, I will give you an example in terms which some of you may be familiar with, but it is obvious that uh, because of the fact that I am transforming z z's like this, okay, any homogeneous function of a fixed degree in z. Okay. So, simplest way is uh, choose. Okay, uh, k fixed and let us say positive and let uh, psi be a function of z i z bar i okay, 
with homogeneity k. That means this uh, is a function of what? Some any multi index k n1 z j and j right? and then some complex conjugates um, alpha 1 say alpha j plus k. Let me write i j homogeneity k, let me call it k. Yes, there is problem. So there are problems. Hmm. That, that, that kind of equation that you are telling will not work here. That kind of equation for the Laplacian will not work here. The Laplacian will be some Laplacian on with a, uh, which I will show you what they are. Okay. So, the standard way of writing Schrodinger equation also will not work. Okay. Everything that you know, learnt will uh, things for, uh, there is a novel by. Chinua Kebe, if you know him, okay, called Things Fall Apart. Okay. He is talking about Ghana okay, and social changes there. Like this here, everything will fall apart. Okay. So, what, but there is another way of writing this. Okay. So, this if I do this, take anything like this. So, this is a fixed homogeneity degree. You can choose. So, the faces will cancel and K will be left over. So, what will happen is that this alpha will become K alpha. But fix k, you cannot choose two different k's. What is k? k is anything you fix. You will get different quantity theory for each choice of k. There are lot of possibilities. For each k integer positive, you choose, you will get an answer. I can also choose k negative by increasing things here. So, what are these things? I will come back to this later. What are, well, Another way of looking at this okay, is the following, and this is very useful. Okay. Another way, okay. let G be in SU2. So, I like 2 by 2 matrices. So, then I can write G, a canonical way of writing it is Z1, Z2 minus Z2 bar, Z1 bar. Notice that this is unitary and determinant of g is 1. Okay. So, every pair of complex variables I can write this g. Okay. This is another way of writing this function on two complex variables. With the, huh? This is S3. This is a statement. So, S3, this is topologically an S3. Now, see what happens if I multiply this by exponential i sigma 3 alpha on the right. So, equal to z is it is it is important theory. The reason is just this that the wave functions are not functions of your configuration space. They are living somewhere else. Their relation to configuration space is somewhat distant. In this simple case you see it rather clearly. But the more complicated cases, you it gets more and more hairy. So this this you see examples. We see parity maybe in a simple way. But in quantum theory, there are very many classic examples. So anomalies. Okay. Parity. Let me just list it for charge Bodokov system. Then you have axial anomaly in QCD and many other things. But all of these things happen because of this. <coughs> now, I, as a last remark, I will say it. Note. You can replace. 
u1 okay, by any let's say compact group that is instead of imagining that just a u1 group is acting you might have some compact group for example this could be discrete okay. so discrete groups happen happen in molecule physics let me again show you here yeah, some of you may not know group theory never mind i'll come back okay. continuous more complicated higher rank groups this, this is there are plenty of examples molecular physics is full of these examples unfortunately people write do molecular physics are not conscious of this deep fact okay. so i think is regrettable okay. because otherwise they would have found out this result about uh, spin half from uh, spin integral spin long long ago it happens in molecular physics quite routinely there could also be some more higher rank group for example it could be su2 continuous an example is su2 that is is for u1 here you get as you put as u2 where is this this happens for example in instant trans and so on. there are many examples and we will see how this is and in gravity gravity is certainly most exciting thing to know Because there are things which we don't even understand. For example, in gravity, these groups which come into gravity are very complicated. And furthermore, because in gravity, people say that there should be diffusion of this invariance, and even Poincaré group is part of this diffusion of this group. Not only uh, are there technical problems. but there are also very deep conceptual problems which i think are not understood okay so there are all these things so in the next uh, class okay, what i will do is to yeah uh, i will try to tell you how this extra u1 phase is reflected in the class in the lagrangian formulation is quite generic if you have u1 case and you see immediately that if you try to incorporate this extra u1 in a twisted case using a lagrangian you will necessarily get a gauge with a gauge group okay which is highly not trivial in this action on the lagrangian okay. then quantization of the lagrangian you cannot fix a gauge okay. so it is not true that you can fix gauge all the time okay. for a particular fixed spin you cannot do it okay. so how do you quantize it and there i will for that purpose i will outline for you as a beginning drugs theory of constraints not in all this complexity but enough so that we can handle it then i'll show you how how to deal with particles of fixed spin so i am taking the most trivial examples i can imagine then i will do magnetic mono charge monopole system then from there i will uh, try to uh, make situation more and more complicated maybe deal with the qcd theta angle from that point of view and then maybe deal with little bit with gravity and uh, by that time i think we would have run out of time so i will try to shift to solid tons and momentum that's it your question you can ask So what you said about the Laplacian will be the square of the angular momentum. Yes. Uh, so, so can the derivatives uh, in the Laplacian operators can be fractional order in that case? In such a case? Or They won't be fractional because the square of the angular momentum is acting on this three functions. Give you j in the j plus one. Okay.